So here's a picture of a guy that um, I coached this year. His name is Brent Vaughn, and he's so excited because he won that logo here uh, signifies the U.S. Cross Country Championship. And uh, he was pretty fired up about that. Here's the point I want to make about Brent. Sometimes his long runs dip under 440 pace. Okay? Anybody want to guess how long his average long run was? Who said? Somebody raise their hand. Yes? 20 miles. Good job. Right on. Now, sometimes we go 21, sometimes we go 22, but it's usually 20 miles. Imagine running four, four what's your 1600 PR? Uh, 518. 518. Imagine running 440 pace up here at elevation at the end of your 20 mile run. It's nuts, right? And he, he had run that pace for a K, for a kilometer. Okay, he'd spend three minutes roughly, or you know, two minutes, 55 seconds. He'd run, he'd run right around three minutes at 440 pace. Then he'd back off to like six minute pace, six, 610. Then he'd go right back at it at 440 pace. So we were basically doing the, a fart left. It was a 20 mile long run. But at the end of it, it was really split up into 14, and then six to seven, and then one to two. So we would often do 21 or 22. We'll put 21. Because he would run 14 miles, then he'd run six miles of this fart lick, and, and, he, and he wouldn't necessarily be running 440 in the very first fart lick, because he wanted to see how, you know, like he didn't want to dig himself a hole, he just wanted to see how he was doing. And then um, what, what's the one to two miles? This is his cool down, okay? But I think the thing that I want you to take away from this is that on a long run, just because it's long, it doesn't need to be jogging, okay? And I think too many people read, it's, it's important, 40 miles a week. How many people in here are running 40 miles a week or less? Okay, raise your hand. How many people are a week running 40 miles a week or more? So some of you had to keep your hands up because I said 40 both ways, right? Okay, 40 miles a week, what's 20% of 40? I heard it, it was eight. So eight miles is a good long run if you're running 40 miles a week. There's a rule of thumb that says your long run should be 20% of whatever you're running. If you're running 50 miles a week, how long is your long run? And if you're running 60 miles a week? Okay, now I don't mind if the 40 mile a week person every once in a while runs 10, and the 50 mile a week person every once in a while runs 12. I think that's fine. But I think more often than not, if you're running 40 miles a week, you should run eight miles, and you should run it fast or slow. You should run it fast, especially at the end. Now, it doesn't mean you have to start out fast. If you're going for a long run, I mean, I'm not saying on mile one, just make it a race. And, you know, when I was an athlete at the University of Colorado, we'd go out for these 20-mile runs. One mile into it, it was on, okay? I mean, you'd basically be talking to your buddies for about a, about a mile. You'd be gossiping and whatnot. And then, you know, seven minutes into it, it, it was on. And, it, you know, um, for me personally, somebody who, did, who kind of struggled doing good long runs, I think I, I, I know I would have been better off running a slower pace um, for the first four or five or six miles and then just keep building into it, trying to run faster and faster. There's a certain type of long run called a progression run where you just start at an easy pace and you keep getting faster throughout the run, okay? So whether you want to do your long run as a progression run or you want to do your long run like Brent here, where you're running 14 miles at a certain pace. No, it doesn't have to be 14. You're, you're on your first few miles at a certain pace, and then you start to fart like on and off. I, I think that's smart. Yes, Annie. Um, I have a question. Um, during our cross country this year, we do our long runs very much like the progressive runs you were just describing. Uh -huh. But during cross country, they were probably maybe a little bit less emphasis on the progression and towards the end we would do maybe like two or three 30 second pickups. So it wasn't quite the fart like that you're describing. But okay, I'm sorry, go back, I was getting lost for a second. So, so you do a progression run. Yeah, so we'd be getting faster, but maybe not, certainly not running as hard as like that fart like pace at the end. But uh -huh. we would do like a 30 second pickup of getting pretty fast. And um, then how much rest? Um, I don't know, like a minute between the pickups. Okay. And it was less, it wasn't really supposed, I don't, I guess what was, is like, what do you think about that? I, I, th I think it's great. I mean, I, I, I think, here's the deal. The, the term fartlet means what? 
Speed play. We should be playing with paces. I think too often in this country, we just have our run on our easy day. I'm going to pick on this one of the counselors right now, Brendan, okay? Brendan is trying to run a lot of miles. I think it's too easy for a guy like Brendan to just get zoned in to kind of one pace that he's running all the time. Now, this time of year, that's okay, but as, as he progresses through his season, he needs to be playing with more paces, okay? So in the middle of the long run, you might have four different paces that you ran throughout that run. You have the, the mile or the pace that you started with, then you speed up to kind of a medium pace, then like Annie's saying, for 30 seconds, you're going fast. I mean, what were you going? Were you going 5K pace for, for 30 seconds? Oh, probably. I mean, we would go pretty hard. Yeah, so you'd be going 5K pace, maybe even three, you know, 3,000 meter pace, like, like your two mile pace. It's only for 30 seconds, but because you're doing it in the context of a long run, it's really hard. And then you back off. When you backed off, you weren't slowing down to a jog, right? No, not at all. No. And, and what I really don't believe in is, here's what we don't believe in in the long run. The long run does not equal a jog. Okay? That's really what I want you to take home from this slide. It's not so much, I mean, 440 pace, there's certain people in here, let me go off on a tangent for a second. Everybody in here is trying to reach their genetic potential as a runner, okay? And we all have a different, ge genetic, a ge a ge different genetic potential. Who do you think was the most talented guy between Oscar and Ron and myself? Raise your hand if you know. Yes? Uh, Oscar. No. Ron. Ron. Ron ran 1342. Yeah, you, you meant Ron. <laughs> um, I ran 1420, and Oscar probably ran about 14 flat. Okay? And, you know, maybe, you know, you could argue that, well, maybe Jay was the most talented one, and he just should have trained better, but I don't believe that. I mean, I, I believe we all trained basically in the exact same system, and all were healthy about the same amount. The bottom line is everybody's got a different talent level that you're trying to reach. Not everybody in here can be the state champ. Not every woman in here can break five minutes, you know? Not every guy is going to break 4, 4.30. But the bottom line is you're trying to see how good you can be. And so the key to this is not to say that you got to be running 4.40 at times during your long run. The key is to say that was his half marathon pace, and Annie, he was doing repeat Ks at half marathon pace in the middle of his long run. Yeah, I have one other question. Yeah. On. So when you're doing more of the progressive type long run, which is something that we did more of in the spring, you know, yeah. by the end we'd be running but pretty darn hard, you know, I don't know, getting down to like close to 6.10 pace uh -huh. for a long run. And so when you're doing that, is there not a, as much of a place for the fartlek type thing if you're already kind of... Yeah, if, if you're already running a progression run where you're rocking at the end, I don't think there is as much of a place for trying to do the fartlek as well. I mean, I, I think you're trying to potentially do too much then. Okay. Um, I, I think you have to choose between, you know, a run that, let's say the first 50 to 60% is easy, and then you're going to do fartlek for 30% and cool down for 10%, mm -hmm. versus making a progression run where basically every 20% gets a little faster. Or maybe a progression run where the first 40% is at a certain pace, and then you go 20%, 20%, 20%. Great. Um, yes? Um, if you go hard on your long runs, how does that make you do it so where you can still recover, but still get so the, that's a great question. Uh, I give you two pairs of socks, but you only have one one set of feet, right? <laughs> um, bottom line is is the question is how you know how do you recover from a really good long run? Uh, what what day do you, will you do your long run when you get home? Uh, we usually do uh, uh, we usually do a medium run Sunday, a short run Sunday, and we usually do okay. Tuesday is usually our biggest day. T Tuesday is usually your long run day. So so you, you don't want to do anything hard again Wednesday. You could do something hard again Thursday, but I'd rather see you just do a workout or a run where, where you go for a run and do some faster strides, and then you could hit a workout again Friday. I really like seeing athletes do Tuesday, Friday, or you know, it could, could be Monday, Thursday, but having two days in between. If you really rock your long run, it's going to take you longer to, to, to recover than if you run your long run easy. But the thing is, you get such a benefit from this long run. A long run that's run really well, you get a lot of aerobic benefit from. And you could argue it's the most important aerobic workout. So I think that's one of the things at the high school level is that, is that people really think you know, that the most important workout is repeat thousands or repeat 400s. And I would argue that a weekly long run, run well, is, is the best way to really, really get fast.
I, 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 so so you, you, in, you keep asking about aerobic and anaerobic. I, I, I'd say just go more by feel, okay? Like you have an easy run pace. Hopefully everybody today was running a little bit harder than their easy run pace. But hopefully nobody in here was running what we call their, their steady run pace, right? And so, you, you know, you're kind of running between easy and, and steady to start this run. And then as the run goes on, then you're running a, a steady pace. Okay. All right, so another uh, fundamental running is when appropriate, run your aerobic runs fast, or when appropriate, run your long runs fast. 